Hey, Joe Gardner from Covers and Code. Today we wanted to touch on some frequently asked questions about our warm season cover crop. So uses on the farm, basically just think anywhere where uh, millet would be used as a winter forage uh, for livestock. So that's after a cereal, winter wheat or triticale silage crop, unseeded or flooded out acres, of course, after a hailstorm. Really just think anywhere you want to produce high energy, high digestible biomass in 60 days. So here are a couple examples from across the prairies this summer. Both these crops were har being harvested on this day, um, which was 60 days after seeding. This is a crop that was 50 days after seeding at a trial of plumus that looked really great. So you, just to give you an example of how much biomass these warm season plants can produce in such a short period of time. So what's in the blend? We're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into each one of these. So the sorghum sedan story, of course, it's the one you see most prominent. It grows tall in the canopy. We have two varieties of sorghum in the blend. So a brown midrib sorghum that grows more leafy. It's lower lignin, higher digestibility, and a taller growing um, sorghum sedan grass. Um, little higher lignin, but still very digestible, capturing sunlight higher up in the canopy. The intermediate grasses in the blend, so the millets we went with, like the sorghum sedan, are a C4 grass. They've evolved in hot and dry climates, so they use water more efficiently. So the neat thing about German millet and white wonder is they're a longer season millet, so they do grow uh, more biomass, but also they will not produce volunteers or viable seed till 80 or 90 days. So if taken for winter forage, there's no risk of having a volunteer issue the following year. And as well, we have a C3 grass, a cool season grass of forage oats on years where we're getting lots of precipitation in the summer. It's a really great way to add high quality biomass. The legumes in the blend, so they provide nitrogen and protein in this blend. Uh, they consist of mung beans and forage peas, both of which add nitrogen to the system. They're indeterminate, so they keep producing nitrogen all throughout the year. And the forage soybeans as well are warm season legumes, so in hot, dry conditions, they can still add nitrogen and protein to the, to the blend. The regrowth, so most of the regrowth will consist of Italian ryegrass, which we've selected because there's less volunteer issues and less overwintering um, concerns than with annual ryegrass. We also have purple top turnip, which we've seen just as a really phenomenal option for fall growth and teff grass, a warm season cereal that grows really great in drought conditions. So building diversity in the blend, we have buckwheat, which is known to solubilize phosphorus in the soil. It is a brassica. We have flax that is a micro, mycorrhizal dependent plant, the most mycorrhizal dependent plant that helps build the hyphae network and allow these plants to share nutrients together and sunflowers that capture sunlight high up in the canopy, root low in the, into the soil profile to access minerals that otherwise wouldn't be available. Because we're dealing with C4 plants that evolved in hot, dry climates, there is very little uh, frost tolerance. So we push seeding back to um, at least June, but really anywhere before the 15th of July, we can establish uh, large amounts of biomass because these C4 plants are more water efficient, drought tolerant than C3 plants. The optimum daytime temperature for growth is 30 and above, whereas a C3 plant, so oats or barley, actually shut down at 30 degrees. So the plants have a, have a waxy leaf surface that reduces water evaporation from the leaf. This works really great um, in hot climates or hot temperatures, but it also works great for shedding water in a swath, which we're going to talk about later in the video. As far as herbicide, so there's no in-crop herbicide for the blend. Of course, we're dealing in plant diversity, so there's virtually no options. So if weeds are, are present, we do want to get a good, clean, fresh start for the cover crop. So if there is weed pressure there, we do recommend a pre-emerge burn down. As far as nitrogen is concerned, so we do have farms that uh, apply small amounts of nitrogen fertilizer to the blend and ha have seen positive results in, in some inst instances, but still a vast majority of the blends that go out actually have no synthetic fertilizer applied at all. In fact, every picture of a warm season cover crop you, you'll see in this video has had no synthetic N applied. So our, the inoculant we use, because we have multiple legume species, we use a multiple rhizobium species inoculant. So this is Endure inoculant, and it just helps keep feeding nitrogen to the system and having these legumes produce nitrogen. Our harvest options are 
basically as follows for most um, um, winter forage options. So dry hay, uh, most people putting up dry hay understand the challenges. Silage, of course, it's a really, really great silage op option. Grows quick, high biomass, and it's a really high energy, kind of medium, 9 to 11% protein feed. Grazing, a really good option. Sorghum sedan holds its value. Good even after a frost. Um, one thing or one concern is uh, once sorghum does receive a killing frost, there is a prussic acid risk for uh, about 10 days to two weeks. So just to be make sure you're not grazing at first frost and waiting a couple weeks before kicking the cows out. But as far as a haying or silage situation, um, there's no risk of prussic acid. It gases off and is safe for animal consumption. Something we've had a lot of success with and see a lot of traction picking up is using these warm season species for swath grazing. They're sown later in the year, so they're uh, swathed later in the year, which means there's less uh, chance of rain on the swaths. And the waxy leaf, of course, even in a swath, if we are getting precipitation, sheds water really great. The other nice thing about uh, the largest biomass cereal in the blend, the sorghum, it's a, it's a lot lower lignin than, say, corn grazing, and it's much more digestible. As you can see, this is the, the same crop before or in the growing season and after swath graze. They do an excellent job of, of cleaning up the plant biomass. So what not to do? We touched on herbicide uh, shortly. So because there's no in-crop herbicide options, making sure you're getting a, a good kill off the hop is, is very necessary. So anywhere we're seeing glyphosate resistant weeds such as kochia, you know, it's probably not a great option. Do not broadcast as with any of our cover crops or any cover crop and plant diversity mixes. We're looking for even germination, even emergence. So the blend works in symbiosis instead of fighting for, for sunlight energy. So getting good seed to soil contact and germination here is key. And as we touched on, do not graze immediately after a killing frost. So waiting a couple weeks to graze. Again, no risk with hay or silage in the scenario as long as it's not being fed for uh, 10 days to two weeks after. So what can you expect for feed quality with the warm season blend? So think very similar to say a corn silage where it's a C4 grass as well. So higher energy, you know, in the this ballpark 65 to 70 TDN, and it will be lower protein, but yet still higher than corn silage, just due to the nature of the, the legumes adding protein to the mix. So a, a really high quality feed for say dry cows throughout the winter, high energy need with a, a little bit lower protein. So for more information, please reach out to a local dealer or visit our website at coversandco.ca. Hopefully we answered some of your questions and thank you for your time. Have a great day.